All right, Shalom, Shalom. Welcome to another edition of Josh Genesis Barashit, Barashiat, Matrix. All praises to Yahweh, who is a God, for this holy breath. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We love you. So here we go. Hey, Salakia, because I'm just getting well from um, being under the weather, so to speak. And so, uh, Salakia, if it sounds like <clears throat> I'm out of breath or my breathing is squeezed. And speaking of squeezed, we're going to go into a lesson here. Um, and this is in regards to that wonderful forefather of ours, Adam or Adama. Or scientifically known as Atom, or who uh, Mitraim bit uh, in understanding Atum, as they might say. And um, of course, there's a whole lot of other things that we can get into in regards to just those words alone. But for the sake of time, we're just going to get into this. So let's look into Genesis. 2 verse 7 pull out your stones to not and Genesis 2 verse 7 says and Yahweh Elohim formed the man of dust from the ground and he blew into his nostrils the soul of life how amazing is that and man became a living being so all praises to Yahweh First and foremost, again, for this creation, this wonderful creation. And Yahweh Elohim formed the man of dust from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the soul of life, and man became a living being. So we're going to focus on just the action of that word formed, right? Because as you ponder and you reflect over the waters of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And you see reflections. You see reflections in 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D degrees. You know what I'm saying? Then uh, dimensional degrees. You go into these. The living womb. So praise Yahweh it came to me one day as I was pondering existence. Um, how Adam or Adama was basically formed in a living womb. The matrix, right? Not the matrix of Neo, but well, we'll get into that. So the living womb, the earth, the arats, the living, the living so-called planet, so-called living environment, the holodeck, if you will, in Star Trek terms, holodeck, the environment that is alive and that creates its creation by the will of Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? The living womb. So that word formed in that statement where it says Adam was formed. So let's focus on what formed is. What does formed mean? So Yahweh de Yath, you go Yatsar, right? Yatsar, to form, to fashion, to frame. That's the simple explanation of that word. I, um, I do think that's the strongest definition also. To form, to fashion, like to create or to mold and shape, to fashion, not fashion models, um, which is a perversion of that. But um, And also to frame, like to make, to create a framework of molding. So... Definition A, A is of creation, formed of creation, formed of the living womb, which is part of creation, knowledge and wisdom, right? Uh, formed, uh, uh, um, B is to frame, preordain, plan, and we all know Yahweh preordained and planned this. Um, in in some, some people's minds, Adam being formed uh, is a quick thing, like, poof, here he is, you know what I'm saying? In other people's minds, uh, Yahweh reveals to how Adam was 
it, it took time unfathomable uh, to form Adam that you can't even imagine, right? Like step by step, process by process, sort of like um, if y'all remember that movie Terminator 2 where um, the T-1000 uh, was melted down into a metallic ore and then uh, as those metallic ore pieces melted then they started to join slowly but they connected like magnetism so you can imagine this formation of adama as an extreme extreme event something very extreme something very intense something very 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 just uh, just extreme you know what i'm saying beyond extreme what you what you would imagine as pressure like like imagine pressure like below the sea like that kind of pressure but then again with order and with movement right so this is meditations that we as asiatics as shemites you know we need to have understanding of our own creation, our forefather, Adama, who was formed, right? And the actual, the work it takes to actually go into that, right? And in this day of technological wizardry, so to speak, a lot of that is downplayed. The natural phenomena, organic phenomena is downplayed. Um, and in place of it is a techno phenomena if you will and when we look at nature so to speak then we see that it is much more technical than our own laboratories and our own technical fields with machinery and machinations of man's design rather here we see adama is yahweh's design so we got nafal to be formed to be created um all Pu'al to be predetermined, be preordained, which Adam was, and Nafal to be formed. So Genesis 2 7. Let's revisit it one more time. Salakia. <clears throat> and Yahweh Allahim formed the man of dust from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the soul of life. And man became a living being. So all that that was just previously said is before he even blew into his nostrils the soul of life. And man became a living being. The for, just the formation alone of who Adam is in creation. Right? This is a spiritual creation too because this was before Adam fell. Right? So you got to have the mind open. And you got to see in these waters, you got to see your reflection upon reflection upon reflection upon reflection. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like uh, if, if y'all, any of y'all have seen uh, The Last Jedi, where Rey supposedly goes into the dark side pit, right? And she's uh, encountering a bunch of reflections of herself in this dark place, um, front and back, right? So you got to imagine that it's similar you know what I mean? That's the thing about these devils, man. These devils will make all these things to fool you. And they don't outright lie to you. They give you a glimpse of your actual nature. But they don't out, outright tell you that that's your actual nature. And that these are glimpses of who you are within. Right? So, I wrote down here, the living womb, biomatrix. Because this was my thought process whenever I was writing, taking down these notes. So, the word formed, yatsar, uh, simply put, means to work, like work, like to work a saw, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it, it can also mean to throw, um, and it can also mean to worship. That's the yod, the yod, the yah, you know what I'm saying? That sound. And uh, it, it can also mean to wait, like to be patient with, uh, to sit patiently, or in this case, to form patiently. In an in a unfathomable patience, uh, it also means to chase or to pursue or to continue or to move with that momentum. Um, it also means to a snare. It could also mean a snare in the negative. Um, but also, if you think about a snare, it's a trap. It's a it's a hemming in. It's a formation. 
right? It's a bordering off to trap, right? Okay, and so, and then you could also mean uh, simply put a hunt, uh, but that is congruent with chase. So like a pursuance or a continuation, a formation, um, a lengthy formation or a lengthy pursuit, right? So that goes hand in hand with forming. Uh, Adam being formed from the arats, right, of the dust, that it was a lengthy process, but it was also in the eyes of Yahweh a, a quick process too. So we have to remember Yahweh is above space and time, our, even our own thoughts of space and time. So, <clears throat> Salakia, uh, like I said, we are Semites, so our Arabic uh, counterparts or cousins, um, they, their letters correspond with attributes of Allah or Allah. So that would be like, that would represent the Yod would be chief, the, the, um, the Zad or the, the sorry, Tazat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> As it as it looks like it's spelled, Zad uh, is eternal, and the Rash or the Ra sound is Lord. So we can obviously see here, even in the Semitic Arabic Semitic, that Adama was the chief eternal Lord, because in this especially being formed, Adama was spiritual, and also governing over, in in uh, governing over the Garden of Eden, right. <clears throat> And also, of course, having access um, outside of the garden in, in Eden itself, right? Because we have to remember that the garden is in Eden. It's not all of Eden. So, or Don, right? Which is a whole other uh, subject. So also, when I was studying, um, oh, let's go back to another simple breakdown of Yetzar. And that is I, me, hand, which is yod, which is uh, to form, as we see. Uh, zat, as in zadak or zadak, right, um, would be righteous, would mean righteous. And we, all, we can all see how that connects with the zadakites uh, as being a tribute, a tribute uh, to Adama. And the head, which is also rash, uh, as, or as in rah, that rah sound. So, um, let's continue on. So, as I was studying, uh, I went into the Book of Jubilees. And so, like, I don't have the Book of Jubilees in book form. So, I'm going to have to go to the computer real quick, like. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Jubilees. Book of Jubilees 8, 18. Jubilees 8, 18. Salakia, Salakia. I'm moving slow. All right, let's see what we can come up with. <coughs> All right, geez, that's small. Uh, let me see if I can find it just to read it. Um, chapter 8. Uh, here we go. Chapter 8, 18. And Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons. And he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy. For he had said, Blessed be Yahweh Alahayim of Shem, and may Yahweh dwell in the dwelling of Shem. So that's why you always hear me bring up that we're, we're Semites, we're Shemites, right? Which, for some reason, the other nations want to take us out of our inheritance. We have a spiritual inheritance, first and foremost. All praises to Yahweh Ka. And 19, verse 19 says, And he knew that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies. So, straight off the bat, we see um, a significant relationship between our inner temple and the Garden which Adama was the, t was the keeper of at first. So just as the high priests are keepers of the temple, Adama is that first or represents that first high priest. Even before he was carnal in any way, he was, a, he was literally a spiritual high priest of the spirit of Rawak, right? Um, 
Salakia. All praises to Yahweh. So, and it extends toward the east. My bad. Uh, and he knew that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies and the dwelling of Yahweh, and Mount Sinai, the center of the desert, and Mount Zion, the center of the navel of the earth. So here we see a connection between, that's where my thought was going on this. These three were created as holy places facing each other. So Mount Zion, or Zion, and there's our word again, righteous. And, um, and we know that uh, Yehawada is attributed to Zion as, as far as representation of Mount Zion. And Yasharal inhabiting Mount Zion um, and witnessing the scepter or, or witnessing Yahweh as Malak, you know what I'm saying? Or, or uh, Salakia Mashiach. Then you can see the significance because all of Yasharal traced back is out of Arat. So we see Adama's connection, the center of the navel of the earth, right? So in this being um Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies. So this being to where we see here the living womb, the biomatrix, the navel of the earth is Mount Zion. <coughs> and we see Adam as coming from the living matrix, the Arats, right? In Eden. And um, but also all these holy places are facing each other. So we see that there is a triangle, if you will, um, of of um, energies. So in Salakia, you got uh, just to remind you, I'm trying to interpret spiritual things uh, in this language and through through speech. So um, all praises to Yahweh for you to listen inwardly and that you can get where I'm coming from. Uh, sometimes words escape me, so I'm trying my best to describe what I'm seeing because um, I'm a visual person. Um, so let's continue on. So in 1820, it says, and he blessed the God of gods who put the word of Yahweh into his mouth and Yahweh forevermore. And so if we go down and we see another example of the attributes of the living matrix or this the, the the formation the extreme heat the extreme pressures of formation then we see on verse 30 it says um this is the land or verse 29 this is the land which came forth for japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever five great islands and a great land in the north but it is cold and the land of Ham is hot, but the land of Shem is neither cold, is neither hot nor cold, but it is blended cold and heat. So that is why us as Shemites, we have a good understanding of various heights, Shamayam, and various depths, Sheol, right, of understanding. So of the cold and of the heat, rather as Hamites understand more so of that heat. And the spiritual connotations to that. And Japheth understands the cold. And the spiritual connotations of that. Very sharp. No, not very warm. Uh, and there, thus we can also see a connection between uh, Idumia or Amalek, Amalek. Whenever they linked up with Japheth. And their methodology of conquering lands is very cold and calculated. Right? It's no warmth to it. Um, and, and you can look no further than to see the experiments of the so-called Nazis. Right. And then uh, we see the Hamites, of course, in the hot regions. And mind you, that hot regions, this is not in just Africa. It's all it's all around. Um, it's on because you have to remember at uh, so-called at Barashit at the beginning, the land masses were not split up um, by the tumultuous sins of our forefathers at the time. So it was portioned out a certain way. All praises to Yahweh. So. The garden. As we saw there, the garden in the east of Eden. Um, and also, to go back, the living womb. So let's think about this, the living womb, right? And let's look at more definitions of 
a matrix, right? What is a matrix? Because if we think about um, a child being raised in the womb, then we see that there's a lot going on in there and there's different pressures and there's different things going on, right? So Merriam-Webster definition of a matrix is something within or from which something else originates. So there you have our living matrix. This in, in us being on this earth in flesh between the, the heaven, the physical heavens, right? Which is the sky and the physical earth, which is the earth. Then we that the pressures that are in between both create who we are on this earth, too. And not to mention all the manipulation of frequencies and things of that nature. Let's strip all that away and just deal with just being in between those two principles, right? And, and the, the amount of creation that goes in between those two principles of physical heaven and the physical earth. You know what I'm saying? Something within or from which something else originates, develops, or takes form. An atmosphere or understanding and friendliness that is in that is the matrix of peace. So those are explanations. So the second definition is A, a mold from which a relief um, surface such as a piece of type is made. So there we go back and we see that Adama was formed. And uh, one of the definitions also is a frame. So there you have Merriam-Webster definition coinciding with that in um, a mold. Um an engraved or inscribed die or stamp. So we see that straight off the bat, Yahweh engraved or or or, or uh, stamped um, who he is, his part of his principalities as Allahim into Adama. An electroformed impression of a phonograph record used for mass production duplicates of the original. Now, how isn't that uh, isn't that amazing? An electroformed impression of a phonograph record used for mass producing duplicates of the original. Adama was formed in the bio matrix from the bio matrix. The natural material, such as soil or rock, in which something, such as a fossil or crystal, is embedded. B. Material in which something is enclosed or embedded, as for protection or study. Uh, fourth definition is the extracellular substance in which tissue cells, as of connective tissues, are embedded. B. The thickened epithelium at the base of a fingernail or toenail from which new nail substances develop. So we start to see a theme here. So the ver number five definition is a rectangular array of mathematical elements such as the coefficients of simultaneous Linear equations that can be combined to form sums and products with similar arrays having an appropriate number of rows and columns. Where do we see that? We see that in the Yahweh the Yah, rows and columns, right? And remember I was telling you in the other lesson in regards to looking at our Yahweh the Yah and our soul, internal soul, you look at it as a sphere. Um, if you're reading the Tharawaz, a book form, uh, which is linear then you're not grasping the whole Tharawa and what it means to live within this living matrix, a.k.a. Star Trek holodeck, <laughs> if you will, of uh, the Tharawa, which is this breath that we're living, right? A rectangular array, as Yashara I should say. An array of circuit elements um, such as diodes or transistors for performing a specific function. Uh, the sixth definition See, Matrix got a bunch of definitions. Six, a main clause that contains a subordinate clause. Right? So we see a theme going on here. The main that contains a subordinate. Uh, an array that contains mathematical rectangular arrangements, rows and columns. Uh, tissue cells that are connective. Um, a mold from which a relief is made, etc., etc. So... All praises to Yahweh for bringing that into the mind, uh, allowing these reflections um, through this water, this, taking this moment in time um, as we reflect in the labor before the sanctuary, right? So, 
Let's continue on. So the Garden of Eden was in the east of Eden. Okay. Um, which we see that Adama was formed in Adan. And we already see the uh, beginning of that. The Aleph, the Alaf, the power. So Allah formed Adama. And then when you, once again, when you think of a pregnant woman, and you think of her stomach as a representation of the uh, of the womb of a living matrix, then you see how we're formed in the matrix, <clears throat> in the living matrix, in the waters, right, with heat, right, and we're formed the pressures that slowly form us over time, once again, and all the elements. If you look, think about where Adama is from, then you look at the fertile soil, and then you think of uh, imagine the runoff from a mountain. Whenever you see uh, the sediment from a uh, water run off you see all the elements gold silver copper magnesium such and such um elements atomic elements pun intended um and then we also see uh nuclear which what did merriam webster merriam webster say up here um because sometimes a matrix is known as a nuclear let's see if it says it in this one maybe it doesn't Anyhow, sometimes a matrix is known as a nuclear. Um, you'll see the phrase nuclear amongst talk of a matrix. So, therefore, you see modern science and the atom uh, associated with nuclear, right? But we see with our nuclear eyes or renucleared eyes in Yahweh, and we give thanks and praises for our creation and our forefather Adama who was made from the richest soil and from the dust, some of the gold and the silver, you know what I'm saying, the copper, all of it mixed in and uh, enlivened by Yahweh's breath. And he became a living reflection. He became that living Alahayim, if you will, the first tiller of the, the, the tiller and the, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding first in the first embodiment, right? So who can know that? But to continue on and also to close out, uh, let's go to some other references. Let's go to Psalms 139, 13 and 16, where we can see where Dawad, all praises to Yahweh Akkad, um, was privy to this knowledge also, of course, because Dawad was spiritually given the layout of the temple and Adama was in the first temple, so to speak, of the garden. He was in the Holy of Holies. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's a shame that we got brothers out here who would say that the tree of life was a snake. And that just isn't, that doesn't, just a shame, man. But you see what happens to those brothers right there. You know, they ended up, they ended up saying you got to not even refer to the Bible anymore either. So, oh, well. Psalms 139, 13, and 16. Psalms 139. Let's see. Come on, man. Sorry if this is too boring for you or if I'm too talkative. But, you know, sometimes knowledge and wisdom is not exciting per se. But you got to soak this stuff up, man. 139, 13, and 16. So we got... For you have, so this one is by Dawad, a psalm. Oh, Yahweh, you have scrutinized me and you know. So he's talking about uh, Yahweh examining his innards. And so here he talks about it. For you have created my mind. You have covered me in my mother's womb. Right? The living matrix, the mother's womb. I acknowledge you for I am awesomely wondrously fashioned there's that word again wondrous are your works and my soul knows it well so even Dawad's soul was was amazed at his flesh and how he was created you know what i'm saying he is in his physical abilities and attributes put into him by yahweh's breath right and by his soul who is animated by yahweh you know what i mean so he was even privy to that in, in amazement of the things that Yahweh was doing through him. All praises to Allah Hayim. 
You know what I'm saying? Because there's only one. And uh, he says, my frame, there's that word again, framed, right? And here we see, again, Genesis, to frame, preordained, formed, right? It's our, my frame was not hidden from you, that which I made, that which I was made in concealment. So what is a baby is inside the womb. You don't see the baby being formed. Of course, you see the belly getting bigger, but you don't see it with your physical eyes. It's concealed, right? Which I was knit together in the lowest parts of the earth. In the lowest parts of the earth. Even David, even Dawad says lowest parts of the earth. And if we go back and we see in Jubilees, it talks about the navel of the earth. And you see the navel of a woman below the navel you see the womb right and you see where the baby is formed the navel of the earth right and then Adam was formed from the Arat and uh, your eyes saw my unshaped form and in your book all were recorded though they will be fashioned through many days to him they are one so that goes back into that space-time reference we we're talking about uh, as far as Yahweh creating Adama in a time that we can't even understand because it was a slow, heated, pressurized, more pressure than any pressure you can think of. But then again, so gentle, so delicate, and so with order that is unfathomable. Just like we were formed in our mother's womb, so much pressure and heat and waters and formation, but yet so gentle and with order, right? Especially if Yahweh brings us out, quote unquote, normally in a normal state. All praises to Yahweh, right? Um, to me, how glorious are your thoughts, O Alahayim, how very great are your headings. Right, and it gives a, a, a cliff note here, so to speak, on uh, his reference to the earth. It says, um, in the lowest chamber, my mother's innards. There you go. And the next verse is going back to Genesis 4.10. Going back to Genesis 4.10. Genesis 4.10. Um... And this is in regards to the earth revealing to Yahweh, not saying, not saying that Yahweh didn't know already, but we see here how the living matrix is actually a living entity. The Aratz, uh, as it says, and the Aratz is my footstool, says Yahweh. Yahweh, the earth is the Lord's footstool, so to speak. So here we go. Then he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Right. 